And before I call the Honourable uh, Member for Tangy, I wish to remind the House that this is the Honourable Member's first speech, and I ask the House to extend to them the usual courtesies. And on that note, I give the call to the Member for Tangy. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodian of the land on which we meet today, the Gunawak peoples and the Wajok people of the Noongar Nation, which Tangni is a part of, and pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. The seat of Tangni is named after them Dorothy Tangni. She was the first female senator in Australia Parliament and a proud Labour member. I'm honoured to stand here today as the first Labour MP elected to represent Tangney in 39 years. Yeah. I would also like to acknowledge my predecessor, Ben Morton, and thank him for his service. My story started in 1961. I was born and grew up in Paritzing, Johor, Malaysia. I'm the oldest among eight children. My family could not afford electricity or running water. We had to chop rubber wood to cook. The floor of our house was rammed earth. The roof was leaky, and our toilet was just a hole in the ground. My parents were uneducated rubber tapper. When it rained, they could not work so there, were, there was no income to feed the family. My parents and the generation before them never went to school. I was lucky enough to be able to go to school. I felt immense pressure to do well. I studied very hard, knowing that life would be better for my family if I did well in my study. Unfortunately, after finishing high school, I wanted to study further but could not afford university fees. As a child, I always dreamed of being a police officer. In 1980, I joined the Malaysia Police Force as I always wanted to serve the community and help people. I enjoyed this career, but the salary was too low, not enough to support my family. So after two years in the police force, I went searching for new employment, and I found the best job in my life, dolphin trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Dolphins are so loving and beautiful. They are cheeky and very intelligent. They can sense our feelings. I was with my dolphin friends for four years before Safari Park closed. I was very sad to say goodbye to them, but I was also happy that they were back in their home where they belong, wild and free. It was during this time when I was a dolphin trainer that I married my love, Chiu Yong. She is up there. <laughs> she is my wife for 40 years and also my best friend and mentor. Without her, I would not be the person you see here today. After the safari park shut down, I started a supply and distribution business that was quite successful with operations across the country. It allowed me to provide a secure life for my growing family. My spirituality is very important to me. In my early 30s, I decided to live as a temporary Buddhist monk for 25 days in northern Thailand. I shaved my head and took a vow of silence. I meditated and ate very simply. During this time, I experienced absolute peace, peace that radiates from within. It is an important experience that I still reflect on and find peace in solitude and containment in helping others. All parents want the best for their children. For me, education is everything. 
and I want my children to be better off than me. In 2002, my wife and I made a decision to immigrate to Australia to give our children the best education and opportunity to secure a comfortable life. My children each receive a great education at the public schools in Tangney and graduated from the local universities. They are now all married and have a great career. I love my children with all my heart and I'm always so proud of them. After our arrival in Perth in 2002, we ran a coffee shop in CBD. It was great to be working as a family. We had to learn a lot of words that I have never heard of before, <laughs> like flat white, <laughs> lemon <laughs> 2006 was a big year for me and my family. I reunited my lifelong dream and joined WA Police Force at the age of 45. 2006, also the year that my oldest daughter, Yin Wee, was diagnosed with cancer. Looking back, I don't know how my family and I go through that period. Every day, I travel back and forth between my intense police training in Jundalap and to free mentor so that I could spend every waking moment by my daughter's bedside in hospital. I have to appear hopeful and joyful for my daughter and my family, even though I was crying inside. My daughter won her battle with cancer. Thanks to our amazing system, all of this underpinned by the Great Labour Party initiative we know as Medicare. Yeah. I'm eternally grateful to the doctors and nurses. For many years, my daughter spent her birthday visiting the oncology wards to express her thanks in deep gratitude. I spent more than 15 years in WA Police Force. I was posted across Western Australia, servicing the community from Eucla, 1,400 kilometer east of Perth, Karatha, 1,500 kilometer north, and back to Perth. Police officers have a most difficult job, constantly taking stressful, undesirable duties that no one else wants to do. Thank you. But must be undertaken. My brother and sister in blue bear a difficult burden. This difficult burden has a name called duty. We start our day before our children or partner are awake. Once we arrive at the police station, we put on our blue uniform and gear up and hit the road. We never know what situation will arise or what will be called to attend. It may be a serious family domestic violence, maybe a fatal traffic crash, maybe an armed robbery, pub brawl, sudden death, murder, and many more. All these are the common tasks for police officers. Police officers often been abused, kicked, punched, beaten, and also spat on. They go from job to job, often tanglessly, dealing with so many difficult situations. They may be tired, they may be affected what they, by what they have encountered, but whenever they receive call, they turn up and do their job professionally without complaining. Then at the end of the day, they return to the office to finish a big pile of paperwork before heading home to their families, keeping a brave face of normality from what they have experienced. And the next day, they start the process all over again. This is the burden of duty. I want to take this opportunity to recognize the uniqueness of policing and the people who put their hands up to serve. I also ex extend my thanks and gratitude to all the frontline workers, like our nurses, 
doctor, carer, teachers, and beyond. And I thank all of them deeply from the bottom of my heart. And I want to advocate for all of you. I received the Police Officer of the Year Award in 2020. I felt that I was where I needed to be, serving the community. Whilst my whole life journey is important, one man made all possible. His name is Gough Whitlam. Mm -hmm. He was the Prime Minister of Australia when the Labour government abolished the last vestiges of the white Australia policy in 1973. He is a hero to me as well as to many. He introduced multiculturalism into Australia. Because of him, we can call Australia home. Because of him, I and many of the new MP here in the 47th Parliament can be the faces and representatives of our multicultural communities. I was born as a third generation, generation Malaysian Chinese, but I stand here today as a proud Western Australian elected by the people of Tangney as their representative in Australia federal government. Western Australia is where I live. I note and cherish the achievements of our state premier, Mr. Mark McGowan, and the WA Labour team. Mark is a gentleman and a statesman over and above his position as a premier. Thanks to his leadership, WA is now the wealthiest state in Australia. In my eyes, Mark is a legend. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Australia's closest neighbour are those in Asia, encompassing the ASEAN region. China, India, Japan, Korea, and many more. And it is important to note that our economy, especially the WA, boost over the last few years was from the Asia region. There is a verse in the Bible from the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verses 10, in the King James Version, that reads in Mandarin, Yan Qing Puru Jing Ling. The translation of this is, better is a neighbor that is nearby than a brother far away. This is the same principle of neighborhood watch in our police terminology. My younger son, DJ, he served in the Australian Navy, which made me very proud of him. Well done, DJ. He is the one that gave me the pink lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> so DJ and I, we believe in peace and we, we believe that peace can bring harmony and prosperity. You can see both of us, we are not fighter. We always smile and happy. <laughs> but if our country required our services, we will put our life on the line for our country and its people. Like all of you here today, Australia is our home. I'm very passionate about promoting peace. When I was young, my grandma and grandpa, he, they told us about their life experiences during World War II. The cruelty and atrocity the Japanese soldier imposed on the civilians when they invaded Malaya. This event left a horrible, terrible burden on them. My grandma, she passed away at the age of 76, and she, she was still in fear of the Japanese soldier, even on her dead bed. In my electorate of Tangney, we have residents from more than 160 nations. With more than half of them, English is their second language. Many of the migrants who live in Tangney are from war-torn countries. They have immigrated from Eastern Europe, Middle East, Central Africa, Afghanistan, and many more. When I was door knocking, many of them told me they came to Australia because they want to escape from war. They shared with me their stories and their struggles. All they ever wanted was to be with their family and to have peace. War comes with deep costs. War 
causes huge humanitarian, environmental, and financial crisis. War brings suffering, pain, and sorrow to many. There are 1.1 million Commonwealth war graves in 23,000 locations around the world. So many mothers, so many widows, so many sons, daughters, and family have cried and mourned senselessly, suffering from unnecessary conflicts, generation after generation. The cost of war is too much to bear. We must learn from history. We must learn from those mistakes. I have been to so many community events and celebration, Jewish and the Palestinian, Tamil and the Sinhalese, Burmese and the Korean. People from country with conflict now live together harmoniously in Australia. I'm a firm believer that we must propagate peace, not only in our communities, but also in our neighboring countries and beyond. Peace, love, unity, respect. These four words are simple but meaningful words to live by. And I choose to live by these words. I believe all of, he, all of us here today want to see Australia as the beacon of peace in this troubled world. Beating war drums is a foolish exercise. I do not believe that war is the way to resolve human problems. Mr. Speaker, words are not enough to express my gratitude, but right now, they are all I have. With the indulgence of this house, I would like to pay my thanks in the first two languages I have learned, the Malay and the Chinese. Kepada semua saudara-saudara yang berada di Malaysia, Australia, dan di seluruh pelusut dunia, terima kasih atas semua perhatian dan berkat yang telah anda sekian berikan kepada saya. Terima kasih atas semua dukungan dan bantuan anda semasa pilih raya di Australia. Terima kasih semua. Kewi li ji zai wu fu si hai de hua ren tong bao, xiong di jie mei men, da jia hao. In translation, to all my friends in Malaysia, Australia and abroad, thanks for all your care and love. Special thanks to all who have reached out to support and help me in the Australia general election. Thank you. To all my supporters, my friends who have traveled across the country to be with me here today, thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the Honorable Kate Dows, MLC, and Raj Savindra for their encouragement to start this journey and for their continuous support. I would like to thank the SDA and in particular Ben Harris for his unwavering support throughout my campaign and beyond. I also would like to thank Tim Picton, Ellie Whiteaker, and all the staff at party office. And thanks to all the WA, state MLA, MLC, thanks for all your support. And special thanks to the member of ISAC, Mark Dreyfus, for doing many days of door knocking with me. <laughs> I would like to thank my campaign team for the incredible efforts. Special thanks to Team Grace Smith, my campaign director. I also want to thank to all my brother and sister in the blue uniform. Thank you for assisting me in door knocking, letterboxing, and many more who have helped to put up hundreds of lawn signs after your hectic shift work. Thank you. And to all my army of volunteers, donor, and fundraising team, you know who you are. I don't want to single out any person because I'm so in debt to all of your help that have given to me. 
I'm forever grateful to each and every one of you. I would not be here today without the support, understanding, and encouragement of my wife, Chu Yong, who is here today. My children, Yin, he's, he, she's here as well. Number two, <laughs> Arthur. Ken Wei, Kai Yong, DJ and Dim, she is there. And my cute, cheeky granddaughter, Alina Ling Ye, she is not here. <laughs> to the good people of Tangni, it is an honor and privilege to serve you. And I am determined to do my best with integrity, remembering the word of Abraham Lincoln, government of the people, for the people, and by the people. I make a pledge on this day, I will never take you for granted. I will work every day to make Tangney a better place, and I will be accessible, responsive, and will deliver on my promises. I will serve all of you with love, compassion, and honesty. While my late parents, they may not be here present physically in the audience today, I want to pay tribute to my hardworking mom and dad. I dedicate this first speech to them both. Apama Kamsia. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Lastly, my wish to everyone listening to my speech today, I would like to speak in Pali language. Sabe Sata Sukita Hontu Anumo Dantu. Meaning is may all beings be well, happy and peaceful. And thank you for listening. Thank you.